So I found a guy on Craigslist recently that had a bunch of various hand tools and in a bucket just full of rusty nails he had this and a couple other pocket knives which were even worse shaped. So this one I decided to get. It was a dollar or two. I can't remember how much I paid for it exactly. But anyway, it was rusted and the outer pieces, the plastic here had some cracks in it and super rusty. So it was really tough to open up and just had seen better days and I figured it'd be a great time for me to try and experiment and see if I could actually take one apart and put it back together and make it look shiny and somewhat newer. Not exactly spotless, but we'll see how it goes. So the first thing I tried to do was just use some finishing nails to drive out the uh, fasteners or whatever they want to call these, the, the pins that hold it all together. I had a hard time. I ended up bending the nails a few times and hit my fingers a few, which was not pleasant. So I did end up grabbing some pliers to hold the nail eventually and then try to pry it apart, which didn't work. So hammered a little harder and at one point you can see where I actually broke the board. I was hammering on it. So after that I decided to get the rotary tool out, grind off the edges a little bit more so that would be a little bit easier to knock out the pins. And This probably took almost as much time as reassembling. Those were the two most challenging parts of the whole situation. But anyway, after bending a few nails and using a few bad words from hitting myself in the hands a couple of times, I finally got it to come apart. So here you can see the just the rusty pieces and then the one piece I'm showing here has the fixed pin. So that one you can't drive out, which is a good thing for me. So it holds it in place. Then I took all the rusty pieces over to the small wire wheel that I have set up on the drill press, ground off the big pieces of rust and grime. And I know I should use gloves, but every time I do, I end up shredding the gloves. So instead, I decided to shred my fingers and just use more bad words. And anyway, I won't bore you with shining up each of the pieces, but we'll just say that my fingers are not happy that I wasn't wearing gloves this time. So after shining up all the pieces, I laid them out the same format so you could kind of see the progress and baby steps in the right direction. After that, just used the orbital sander, got each piece, flipped them over, and again, I won't show you each of the individual pieces, but after the rotary sander, got just sheets of sandpaper and went over each of the pieces, especially the blade here, because anytime you try to use a rotary tool, it's just going to slice right into the sandpaper on the orbital sander, excuse me, not rotary tool. So after the first pass of sanding, they looked pretty decent and definitely much better, no rust left over. So then I used some metal polish here, which this stuff works really well, aluminum, brass, steel, any of the pieces that you need to polish up, it's really good stuff. So giving them a good shine, then after I get finished, laid them out so you can see a little bit more progress and even more shine starting to show through. Then I got a little bit ahead of myself and tried to start assembling pieces and realized that that was not going to happen because I wasn't ready. So I went ahead and went over to the bandsaw, got a piece of wood and cut it in half so that way I could lay it out and then mark the pieces I'm going to need to cut. And they're just really rough measurements. I don't want to get too precise at this point. I want to have plenty of room for me to sand away any of the excess. So back to the bandsaw, trim off the excess pieces, shape up one little edge, which is not bad at all. So I make quick work of that, and sorry for the angle, you can't really see what I'm doing. And then took my time here. I wanted to make sure I didn't over sand. So sand of the edges and then test fit them multiple times. I'm only showing you two of them, but there were many, many of them. After that, just got some quick five minute epoxy. I actually remembered to mix it this time, so <laughs> it held. At the last project, I forgot to mix it and ended up having to scrape off all the dried up epoxy that had fallen off between the two pieces because I screwed up. So lesson learned, definitely make sure you mix the epoxy. You don't just squeeze it out onto the pieces. And then got them in place and you're supposed to wear gloves for this too which again I'm not very good at following directions. 
So I clamped them up, and then after I did, I realized that from another project, if you don't put tape around it, there's a really good chance you're going to have your clamps get glued to the pieces. So I had to take the clamps back off and then put them on. So yet another lesson learned. And after that, I was able to go over to the buffing wheel, put some polish, and polish up all the metal pieces while the epoxy's drying. So this didn't take long. Most of the sanding and polishing I did earlier, so this is just kind of fine-tuning. Once the epoxy's dried, went over to the belt sander, and certainly took my time here. Did not want to scratch up the pieces that I'd already given a first coat of buffing and polishing, and then definitely didn't want to over sand and then get too much of a divot which would not have made me happy so after that went over and just got some sheets of sandpaper yet again took my time here worked my way up from 80 grit on the belt sander 120 220 and 320 within the different sheets of sandpaper it came out pretty well so it's pretty level, no real ridges or anything that's kind of concerning to it. And that piece has the little indentation. Afterwards, just put a little bit of tongue oil on there to give it a nice shine. And actually the buffing wheel worked out pretty well too, because some of the buffing from the metal carried over to the wood and made it even shinier, which is not my intent, but it didn't mess it up, so I went ahead and ran with it. But the downside of putting all the tongue oil in is I realized that I forgot to drill the hole for the middle pin. So after I'd finished it, sanded it, and made it all pretty, I had to go back and drill the hole and took my time to make sure I didn't screw up any of the wood or leave excess burrs or spurs, whatever word you want to use. So anyway, after I got those done, decided to go back, put all the pins in, and this is the absolute most frustrating part. And because uh, I don't want to use bad words on camera and I don't want to have you guys watch. Let's just say it took me a long time to actually get these in the right order. So after that, got them clamped up and then just used some clippers to cut off the excess of the finished nails here. That's all I used was finished nails as the pins. So cut off the excess pieces. Then I put it in the vise, which, sorry again for the long and distance angle, and just hammered it down so that way the edges would round over and not pop out and hold all the pieces together. So it came out pretty well. I'm happy with it. It's shiny. The first go around of restoring a knife worked well. The blade's certainly much sharp, much shinier, and I was able to get a little bit of an edge, but I will say that I did not do a great job on lining it up. So when you shut the blade, you do have to... Uh, kind of finagle it a little bit and then you can see where when I was hammering I did kind of shift it so anyway again first time project worked out big picture and I'm gonna give it to a friend of mine who I know will appreciate it here's a little before and after and I hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for watching